everyone, I'm Connor and welcome to my channel The Closet. If it's your first time here on my channel, I like to talk about all things luxury. So if that's something you're into, I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button. And if you're returning, welcome back to my channel. Now, my previous video that I did was a driving vlog that when I started filming it, obviously I didn't know what I was going to talk about. It just kind of came out. But ultimately, I titled the video why I have stopped watching a certain luxury YouTuber. And in that video, I go into detail. If you haven't seen it, I suggest watching it first and I'll link it up above. But analytically speaking, that video was one of a few that had gained the most views in a certain period of time. And I'm not saying that obviously to brag or anything like that. Um, I'm saying it because obviously that topic was something that people felt very passionately about or they didn't realize and it kind of opened up a new conversation. So I wanted to kind of add on to that in a greater kind of perspective. Um, so what I'm thinking is do YouTubers or more specifically do luxury YouTubers owe a sense of responsibility to their viewers regardless of the size of their channel? But if you're a content creator, do you owe a sort of responsibility to the people watching your channel? Let's get into it. In my previous video, I basically touch on why I stopped watching Mel in Melbourne's YouTube channel. And it was basically around her partnership with Cassette. Once Cassette had a lot of negative uh, press coming up about them. They'd lost their entropy license to authenticate. There had been numerous alleged cases of fake bags being sold. Mel did a big video addressing her partnership with them, the kind of details around it, but I don't, I didn't feel that she addressed it properly. And I felt like if I was someone who'd been religiously watching Mel's channel, then this whole cassette drum had come out. I'd purchased a bag from cassette based on Mel's recommendations, based on Mel's association with cassette to later find out that the bag was fake. I would feel incredibly let down to then see Mel's explanation for that. That was the perspective I was coming from. And a lot of people understood that, which I was, I was happy that my message didn't get lost. Um, and obviously it was nothing personal to Mel, nothing personal to her channel. It was just that specific video and why I stopped watching. But it obviously raises a larger question or a larger kind of status quo when it comes to YouTubers or you know, more specifically luxury YouTubers. And as your channel grows and as you get a larger following, that does come with a greater responsibility. Now, I'm not coming from the perspective of someone with a huge channel. I mean, obviously you can look down and see exactly how large my channel is, but I am wise enough or I am responsible enough to know that I do have a following of people who do follow me on social media, who follow my YouTube channel, who follow my TikTok or whatever. And there is a responsibility that I have where I can't just make videos about products that I recommend or things that I think people should buy when I personally don't think that they should actually buy them or I'm being endorsed or I am being you know, paid off or I've got an affiliate, affiliate, <laughs> affiliate code there is a responsibility. So it doesn't really matter how big or small your channel is. If you have an audience of people watching you, you can't lie and you can't be paid off in a direction to mislead the people watching your channel. That's my personal opinion on the topic. And I, I think people get lost in the, how big your following is versus that you actually have a following. And I, I read an article on some business insider thing, and it was basically talking about the demise of the huge influences and how having a blue tick next to your Instagram name or Twitter name doesn't really mean anything anymore. It's all about the rise of the micro influences. Now I've had conversations with Dale about this a few times. And I say to her, you have such a huge impact to influence the people on your Instagram and your YouTube channel because you represent a, a demographic of women who are in your similar position, they're in your age bracket, they have the same sort of discretionary income as you. So when you're talking about Fendi bags and all these kinds of products and, you know, things that in your, um, in your, what's the, not Secret Santa, what's it called? <laughs> the, what's that thing called? <laughs> With all the numbers? the advent calendar, when you open their products from the advent calendar over Christmas during her vlogmas, people are waiting to see what your opinion is. If you're saying, oh my God, this is the best, whatever, 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 people will buy that because they trust you, they listen to you, they love you. So Dale was someone I would classify as a micro influencer. 
and that comes with a huge responsibility. Obviously, Dale is somebody, in my opinion, who does the right thing. Like, Dale is very true to her channel. She's true to her products. She's true to the things she talks about. She doesn't buy stuff, return it, says, get this bag, get this bag, it's amazing. And then you find out two weeks later she doesn't have it anymore. Obviously, Dale is not like that. And she is an example of somebody that I, if I wasn't on YouTube and was following, I would think that she's a positive role model. Does that make sense? <laughs> and obviously that's biased because we're friends, but putting our friendship aside, that is definitely my true feelings on the matter. So this rise of the micro influencer is something to definitely look out for. And I feel like there's a lot of genuinity. <laughs> genuineness. <laughs> Let's use that word. There's a lot of genuineness in someone who is a micro influencer because whilst they may not have the largest following in the world, they're at that, that step on social media where that they can be more honest with how they feel. They don't have like endorsement deals coming out of their ass. Like they pick and choose what they want to talk about. So that is probably in my opinion, a more realistic kind of YouTuber or realistic influencer to follow. With that being said, when you're watching a large YouTuber and they're talking about a certain product, whether it be a bag they've purchased, a skincare product they're using, a perfume, whatever, I, I honestly fail to read between the lines of whether or not it is a sponsored video, they've been paid to say this, the, the product has been gifted, or whether or not they genuinely like or dislike the item, because I don't know how they've been influenced by this. I don't know who's paying them. I don't know all of those variables, so I'm always incredibly skeptical of those things. Some YouTubers put the disclaimers that this is a sponsored video, this product has been gifted, I've been collaborating, um, this has got product placement. Obviously all of those keywords means they're inclined to talk about the product in a favorable way that represents the brand or how the brand would like to be represented. So I understand that they're the lines that you can read between, but a lot of YouTubers or influencers don't use that vocabulary. So it's incredibly confusing to know if you're actually watching a commercial or an advert or you're watching the gen uh, the genuine opinion of the, the presenter, I think that there needs to be a lot more transparency with those kinds of videos. And ultimately, with what the title of this video has suggested, YouTubers owe an incredible amount of transparency to their viewers and they need to be honest with what they're talking about. I don't think it is at all fair, I actually think it's incredibly misleading to purchase a luxury item, whether it be a Rolex or an Hermes fine piece of jewellery or a Birkin or a Prada re-edition, whatever it may be, in one video to unbox it, hype it up, say how amazing it is, say it's the best thing you've ever used, talk about how great the quality is and blah blah blah, to then three videos later down the track say why it didn't work out for you. You're, of course, you're entitled to sell a bag that does not work out for you, but you cannot do a video that completely contradicts it three weeks later. Like that is totally misleading, especially when you have a large following and those people are looking up to you and they've actually purchased something based off your advice. Of course, the caveats are that YouTubers unless they specifically state at the start of the video that they're in a market or they're in an industry where they're able to give the position of advice. Most of us aren't. Most of us are just giving our opinion on something and obviously you take that off face value. However, realistically, we all know that that doesn't work because I have purchased things based off the recommendations of other YouTubers or influencers on Instagram. We all have. So we do put a lot of trust into these videos. We expect that product reviews and we expect that these sorts of things do come with a large portion of honesty and I think that we need to kind of reevaluate. and I'm sorry I don't want to speak for everyone but I think that there are a lot of YouTubers out there in this luxury community that really do need to reevaluate how they speak to their audience and have a lot more transparency. I feel like I'm being like this martyr and I'm telling everyone what to do and I promise you I'm not but I just find it incredibly irresponsible when I'm seeing thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of luxury unboxings which not only is just incredibly wasteful and it's just very out of touch 
I find it just incredibly damaging, incredibly irresponsible, because obviously the average viewer can't do that. And it almost creates an unattainable lifestyle that I don't even think the YouTuber in the first place can afford to do. So I don't even know how that works, but that's just my two cents on it. I would like to see maybe YouTube implement more guidelines or more rules and regulations around transparency, especially with product placement, giveaways, Rev uh, not reviews, but you know, you know what I mean. So that's just my two cents on the matter. Let me know in the comments down. Let's keep the conversation going. Obviously, if you disagree with me, please place it in the conversation. I don't want yes men. <laughs> Normally people are great, but I don't want people just going, I agree, I agree. If you don't agree, put it down in the, com in the comments and we can have a discussion about it. It's all healthy and happy rainbows and smiles <laughs> but thanks so much for watching this video guys if you haven't followed me on instagram hop over there and follow my account the closet by connor also my tiktok account by the same name the closet by connor thanks so much for watching guys and i'll see you all next time